Welcome, everybody, to Safe Cafe number eight. I'm David Lassoff. I'm your host with my co-host, Tim Coomber. Hi, Tim. Hello, David. How are we doing this week? I'm doing good, doing good. Excited uh, about how things seem to be developing. Hi, Dawn. I see you're there with Tim. Hi. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. And there's Rich uh, at the noon hour out there in New Mexico. How are you doing, Richard? I'm doing fine. Hi, David, Tim. <laughs> so um, we were talking before the broadcast about some of the ideas about how to get things moving along with the SAFE network and we're going to spend, uh, I think we're going to spend this hour and a half really talking about that and uh, we did have uh, Ewan on earlier who had to go catch a train, he's going to be back on a later date. Um, but he's going to talk with Tim. He's a young man who's got some really great ideas about uh, business and marketing, especially social networking. And uh, we were also talking with uh, Darren, who's a friend of, of Rich's, who's a programmer, actually, who lives in London. Um, and he, he kind of gave us his ideas about how to put things together for programmers. So I'm just going to put it out there to the rest of you and ask you um, to, you know, since we are on the air, is to, it's okay to say things that we've already said in the green room so that everyone else can hear about it too. Um, I'm interested to hear what you think about what are the next steps to helping people learn about and know about what is uh, Network 99 and Suite 99, Studio 99. Any of you? Who's got an idea? Well, I'll start, David. I mean, I was talking from my background. I, I was thinking what we might need, what we would need to give to the developers is a specification, an outline. And we discussed this and and as you said, you've already started on that. And I think the white paper that you're writing is along the right lines. Um, but what we need to do is, is break it down into the different technical capabilities so we can take those smaller chunks to developers and get them developed. Because the, the SAFE network will be going live very early next year. And to make to make as much a contribution to that as we possibly can, we need to get Network 99 up and running as quickly after that date as possible. So by uh, breaking it down and bringing developers with specialist skills, we have a good chance of getting there quickly. Now, um, I have thought that and continue to think that what we need to do is and especially now that I'm writing that white paper, which is a non, I want to emphasize, is a non-technical white paper. It's, I don't even know if you can call a, a white paper non-technical, but that's what I'm calling it because I'm making no pretensions to, um, you know, to being technically competent to write uh, the software because those that's beyond my skill set. But... Um, what we what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the functionality of of what we what we consider to be a minimum viable product or an MVP. And my feeling, I, uh, again, is is basically this: is that we want something that basic that enables artists to upload their music to or upload their independent films to into something I'm calling channels and that the channel itself be have basic utilitarian functionality but it also have cosmetic functionality the idea that artists and musicians could in a sense decorate their channel if you will with its own appearance similar to like a website with certain kinds of functionality like you know maybe when you clicked on it 
a song would come on or a movie clip would come on or certain kind of wallpaper that you'd see and in that way any channel would have the same functionality but every channel would be different in its appearance and it would also enable be easy tools for anyone who was not technical to play around with those tools to change the cosmetic cosmetics of the channel and and that's the user I mean that's the artist end of it now if if the, if the artist can do that we want the user to be able to access those channels easily and freely and that there be some kind of some kind of search capability to be able to find a channel either by genre either by um, name so and then and then it should have like this functionality meaning the idea that you can uh, have some kind of broadcast capability for an event if you're a musician um, you know so it's it's really we want to steal the developers from for who who maybe created this or things that are like this because um, it's kind of kind of like what we're doing but you know, and it's kind of like YouTube. When you put those things together, you know, it doesn't. You don't make any money here uh, if you're an artist loading your 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 music or your films uh, on a YouTube channel. Why not? You know, make a living. And that's pretty much what that's pretty much what Network 99 is all about. Studio 99 is a is a is a is a much more complex animal, but I think that down the road we need to be thinking about how to do that, but that's not where we're at right now. I think we need to think about what is what's the minimal product, and that's what the white paper is going to be about. I want to. I'm going to switch over right now to um, my. Uh, my friend here, um, Rich, he gave us a, an interesting Network 99 concept for a website. Why don't you tell us about this, Rich? All right. Uh, so the basic idea is an uh, informational website that answers uh, what would be frequently asked questions on the left-hand side uh, is to quickly define what is made safe, what is what is safe coin, what is network 99. Um, so th it gives the the user of the website uh, instant uh, understanding of what they're looking at. Um, and to the right column, I thought it would be good to have a list of um, some of the what did you call minimum viable products? Yeah. Uh, applications. Yeah. And I hadn't read your paper before I created these, but the, the idea, um, one of the things that hit me is the possibility once Network 99 is, spans the globe and every, maybe even every city, uh, what a resource that would be for somebody who was looking for footage, for stock footage, and uh, okay. to start creating a library of stock footage and, and uh, sound libraries. Um, that would be open to anyone and everyone. Um, maybe, maybe for Safecoin, maybe for free. However, uh, it wants. However, we want to set it up, or you want to set it up. Um, it just seems like a. It would be a great resource for getting. Uh, you know, just opening up an, a whole new world of access uh, for for footage, and also to create you know new libraries that that this could easily and quickly become the biggest. Uh, footage library on the internet. Hmm. Well, yeah. that's cool. So. I mean, if, once we've done it by that way with music and, and films, we've then got the opportunity to roll it out to the education sector because I think that's an area that will be of interest where people can have educational 
resources available to anybody free of charge anywhere in the world. Sure. Imagine somebody saying, uh, "Let's uh, today we're going to do a field trip through the Louvre," and somebody with their cell phone walking through the Louvre, broadcasting to classrooms around the world. Kids asking in real time uh, questions to the curator. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. And and it's great that you're thinking along these lines because you see the safe network. We've never, I don't think we've ever had any online experience like the Future Safe Network where the, the network is so obviously powerful and fast and where we don't have to, you know, sit around and wait for things to buffer anymore. And it's, I mean, we're talking about some, something that's really, really, truly the next generation. Um, I, you know, along the lines that Don Don just mentioned, I wanted to read off to you my uh, an imaginary list of, of of channels, but that's just because they haven't been it hasn't been done yet. But when you think about a channel on net on Network 99, it should be it should be able to do any of these things. See, that's the functionality part of it. So you can have like music and band channels that are just, let's upload music and it becomes a library and that's the way that it is. Okay, you can do it that way. Or let's say you want to have a live show or a concert. Well, that channel or another channel has that capability. Or let's say you just want on demand on-demand song or album channels or a DJ channel, you know, like a DJ who wants to just sit there and play whatever kind of music. I mean, all that is possible w with existing technology. Um, music station channels, kind of like an FM, FM channel we have, you know, people are used to. Um, radio streaming channels, uh, music video channels. Uh, I won't get into every one of these things, but music is is so important. I just want to talk about that a little bit. Game network channels. You know, people who like to play games on on channels or a particular game by a, by name or by genre. Um, film network channels, independent film channels by genre or by director or by artist or, or, or actor, um, TV network channels by what type of TV show you're talking about, variety shows, serials, miniseries, or what about news network channels, weather channels, talk show channels by type, you know, Safe Cafe has its own channel other news and information channels, whistleblower channels, the 99% revolution channels where people get together and talk about how to change the world and they're not worried about um, people, you know, ratting them out because everybody... But David, have you got, is there any chance you could share that image I showed with you last night because that plays in with what we're talking about? Uh, the idea I give was all the nodes. So oh, yeah, hang on. Let me get that one up. Give me a minute. Perfect fit for the website. Yeah, okay. hang on. I got that one. I mean, I kind of saw what Rich had been building, and I thought that would be perfect for it. Because the idea of flicking in and out of channels, and they will all be under the same banner. Right. And the other, the, um, here, let's do this. Give me a second. That's all right, man. <laughs> no, I have it here. It can't be too far away. Come just, on, come just take me a second. I mean, I, and you know, I hadn't really even like, um, you know, there was only. Let me get rid of some of this stuff now. Make sure that I can actually just paging through some of this. Stuff. Here we go. Okay. Um. There we go. Okay. So the idea being that all the all the nodes 
as you see, the coloured notes would be a channel for a film director, a band, and that could sit perfectly on the screen design, so it could be under the big banner of the, the, the web page that Richard's designed in the middle, and then you can click on every single node, and like I'm saying, it can go off to any direction you want to, whether it's education, music, film, etc., etc., etc. It's the concept we're trying to build on, isn't it? It's, it's the idea a lot of people come on together under a banner, which is the power of what we're doing because we're not just saying, oh, this is a music channel or this is a film channel. It's for everybody. And like we're saying, there's many. Yeah, people. I mean, you're, you're right. It's, yeah, and you, and what I'm saying, all I'm saying is that channel can be for anything. Like, I, here's some other stuff. Like, Don was talking about, like, I envision a whole thing called Knowledge Network 99, course channels, subject channels, library mm -hmm. channels, wiki channels, nature channels. Rich just talked about it there, a museum channel. Can you imagine? You just go to the Louvre has its channel. I mean, why not? Yeah, why not indeed? And, and with the status quo at the moment, we need to have alternative places to to bring this knowledge together because at the moment it's in the hands of individual companies who are who are on server based systems that that could collapse and so we need to disseminate that information to the rest of the world so that we all have access to it not only now but for the future i think that's i think that's what's really great about what we're up to, it, it, it has those kinds of implications which go, you know, well beyond even, you know, the good intent that we have to, you know, to, uh, for people to earn what they make, I mean, earn according to the things they create. I also had uh, some ideas for what I call event channels, live channels, well, just any kind of event. What about uh, gallery channels, like visual artist channels, channels, photography channels, you know, uh, fashion design channels, fashion show channels, business networks, project channels, business channels, market channels, travel networks, kinds yeah. of things. I mean, it's it's unbelievable what the you know, if you think about it, food, ne food network, chef channels, cuisine channels, restaurant channels. Um, you know, it's just, I mean, is that what you meant, Tim? Is that you could just put, you could do anything with these. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, I think it's for, I mean, one of the things that kind of hit me the last sort of week or so was like, we haven't even talked about it, and it's a massive thing that I think a lot of people are going to be attracted to, sports. Can you imagine? Oh, yeah. Can you imagine sports on this, where you could do like I, th I thought that through the week. Richard's idea that he mentioned in last South Cafe, the idea that people can go along, like he was mentioning, with scene things could go along and film an event, and then that could be people go on to it. Well, can you imagine that on a sport event? Can you yeah. imagine how revolutionary that's going to be to, to to everything? I mean, I'm from England, we're we're, we're, well, we're obsessed with football over here, soccer, as we call it. Now. It would revolutionise the whole game because at the moment, there's so. I was talking to David through the week. There's so many football clubs that are suffering because of this Keynesian centralised economics plan. That this, you tie it hand in hand with rituals the same, and you've you've got a revolution in your hand in sports. And sports covers like that's the one if you want to tap into the world. Sport. I mean, how much does the World Cup what, get people get attracted? How many people get attracted to the Olympics? Once you start offering. So many. I mean, basically, the, the, what we could offer on Network 99 is only limited by the imagination of the human being who has the channel. Well, you, you hit on it. You know, I never imagined what you just said. I, I wrote down, uh, I wrote down um, on that list sports channels like team channels and match match report channels and live match broadcasts. But you could imagine in, instead of like uh, a first division team not getting, you know, much of anything, uh, they could own all the rights to broadcast all their stuff. You want to see them go on their channel. 
Well, it, it gives the opportunity, Dave, for, for, I mean, I don't want to talk about football too much, but Barcelona are a perfect example. They're owned by the fans, and it's a model of, that a lot of people look around Europe and go, that's the way. Well, this gives the opportunity for fans to take over the whole game, because right. they'll be able to go, right, well, we've got the power of Safecoin and the safe network to, to basically compete with any organisation out there who, bear in mind, are going to fail more and more and more. They're not going to have the power. We're, we're, this is the revolutionary aspects of what we're doing. And I don't think many people have really got their head around like, like you were saying. All they need to do is hear it because this is such a revolution. Such a revolution. And the world is ready for it. Yeah, I think the world is – this is what I meant is when I was saying there's a pent-up demand. The world is ready for it. They have been ready for it. It's, it's like – you know, it's the way it's supposed to go, and that's all we're doing is facilitating that. In fact, I'll go so far as to say this, is that honestly, the need for what we're doing is so high and so strong and so big that even if, even if we trip over ourselves fumbling along the way, we'll still be successful at it. Because, you know, it, it, it just addresses such a, a deep human need and desire all in the same time. It's both need and desire. And the revolutionary aspect, I don't want to say is, uh, by the way, we have some viewers. If you want to ask any questions, uh, if you've signed in uh, on Google, you know, if you sign in because you have a Google account and a uh, Chrome browser, you can text in your questions. It's up there. Uh, if you don't, uh, you, just, you know, don't worry about it. Um, maybe you can get one next time. You can just continue watching on YouTube. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm not, I don't make any bones about it. I think, I think the 99% revolution is real and uh, we shouldn't be, uh, you know, we shouldn't pull any punches. Um, the safe, the safe cafe is here to help foment that revolution, because it's right and it's good that people should be able. It's, it's right and good that an artist should be able to keep 99% of his own uh, 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 income for what he does, uh, instead of just giving away his art. You know, it's just. It's it's an amazing it's an amazing concept. The idea that the network will pay you Safecoin just blows me away. Um, so some of the first things I think we need to do is, Tim, we were talking about you know getting the bands on and things like that. I think I think we need you know and 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 Rich, you today, uh, I was listening to uh, Gleewood that. Really great band that you put on Google Plus. I'd love to see those guys on. And and uh, the other the other the other band. What was the name of it? From um, I, from, I, I need to think. What was uh, Secret Circus? Secret Circus, right? Yeah, there I was know. a there was that they were from Sweden and Gleewood was from your neck of the woods, I think. Yeah, I had met one of the members uh, from Secret Circus about half a year ago. Um, a, a friend, my friends from Gleewood were traveling with them, touring with uh, Secret Circus when Secret Circus had a tour in the U.S. And uh, yeah, they have really great videographer working for Secret Circus. I, I, their videos are top notch if you looked at them. And uh, but Gleewood, I'm sure they'd be happy to come on and, and uh, share a little. Uh, they're actually going on tour, and over well, they're on tour right now, and they'll be on tour throughout the rest of the year, and uh, and I introduced them to Bitcoin recently, and they, they were kind of excited about that. They didn't really quite understand it, uh, so the the idea of a decentralized internet it takes that you know to the you know, tenth degree. You know. Right, I get it. Listen, you know, it's an education process, and that I think that you know this is Don. This is what you know, I know you're big on education and 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 and, and knowledge. I think uh, you know this is part of our basic job is to educate people about the basic things about the safe network. You know, 
What does it do? Why is it important? Why should I care? What's Safecoin? How is that going to do anything for me? Safecoin? What are you talking about? You know, people, they, they, they don't know, and we got to tell them, right? You're right, because uh, as we're finding, and I'm, it's not just conjecture, this, this is actual proof, the more we're putting this out, the more this filtering slowly into the consciousness of people, they're flooding. I mean, I, I personally have had so much response in the last week, since, the, since last week's show. Filmmakers, bands, musicians. I mean, do you know what I mean? I mean, a filmmaker in your part of the woods, do you know, Rich? He's, he's from, you know, called, he's got a film out called The Bad Ideas, and he's dying to come on this. It, it, what I'm trying to say is that I, I've said this in Safe Cafe too, and it's my big contention, and I'll get more into this later on. But I know, and I know, it's not just a, a belief. I know that many artists, films, bankers. Uh, Etc. Etc. Are going to come on board of this, and they're going to come flooding towards this because it's the environment they've worked in for years. I mean, Rich will know, you know, his life and the bands he works. I'm sure if I put one of his bands on and talk to the demons, it'd be exactly the same thought process. So I know they're going to be there, and I'm finding that already. I'm finding people are flooding towards what we're saying. My worry is, and I think that's we, we have to keep putting this out is. It's all right us doing all this, but if we're just going to do all this and no one's going to come on to develop, we're going to lose all these people. That's why it's crucial that we find people that are going to build this. And like I keep saying, we don't want the Model T4 with the gear engine and all their sat-nav. We want just the basic platform. And that's why I think it's crucial that we go out and keep trying to push to people who are programmers. Because I, I look at it, if the artists of the world and the musicians can understand this, then why are the people who are spending all their time programming and coding, how come they're not jumping on board because the artists and the musicians? It's a deep question, but I think it needs to be addressed because I don't understand why the people who are working 24-7 in a, in a decentralized world aren't jumping on board. I don't understand that. I mean, maybe someone can tell me, enlighten me, because I've got loads of musicians and bands, and my worry is that, that they're, they're going to come and demand, 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 and that we're going to have nothing for them. And I think this is something that has to be addressed. I think it's something that we need to really, right now, address. Because it's all right us talking like this. It's all right us attracting the people in, and people will come. But we need to have development. We need to have to start building things. And for that, we need to reach out to coders and programmers and developers. And I'd, I'd love to hear suggestions on how we do this. I've been saying it since Stay Cafe too. I don't know how to get these people on board. I really don't. Well, from what I understand, there's been over 500, uh, well, last I heard, 700, according to David Irvine, programmers that signed up to work on Made Safe projects. So uh, I imagine all of them aren't working on the Made Safe project at the moment. So it would seem that he has some kind of a, a list that perhaps could be shared mm. of programmers who would be willing to jump on. Okay. So your next trip down there, man. That's your job. No, don't worry. No, I'm serious. <laughs> I am. I saw am I. <laughs> I'm telling you. It, it, it has to be people that have – I mean, that's the right place to start because it, it has to be people that have already, in one form or another, shown interest in the project generally. I'm talking about safe, project safe, that they, they, that they understand at some level the value of what David and – and made safe for trying to do. Now, if we can tap into some of those guys who have shown interest and they have their own ideas, maybe that maybe some of those guys would be interested in what we're doing because it only takes a few. If we can get a few guys interested because they are programmers, they run in those circles. They can go find other guys where we can't go find that many and we might you know just need to get lucky in a certain sense of finding a few uh, they can go into their network of programmers talk the language and say this is what we're doing and then start working on it and uh, you know I also know by way of news that the um, application Programming interface, the API, um, 
they're coming up. Maysafe is coming up with what are, to my understanding, like developer packages. You know, a way to go about developing applications and to interface them with the network. This is not quite ready. So here's what I th here's what I think where we're at today, right? You know, literally today. Um, they're they're half they're not even halfway through the test nets, and that means that everything that's going to be developed surrounding Safecoin is still a little ways. We don't have a lot of the information that we're going to need to have in order to code the programs. Even if even if we had those guys today, um, we'd still be biting it, biting at the bit a little bit because MadeSafe itself is not quite ready to fully accommodate application developers. They're getting there. They're almost there. But... Um, what but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be looking for people we should be um, but I think we have to go ahead also with um, you know reaching out to to the artists it, it isn't an either or thing but we shouldn't be afraid we shouldn't be afraid to reach out to the artists we should just be honest with them and tell them what's going on where we're at and, and, they and, understand. and they're ready, they understand and they're ready to be involved in testing and it not to be the, the, the best software package they've ever come across. They want to be a part of the change. They mm -hmm. want to be a part of the future. And, and they're prepared to take something that's rough and ready around the edges to be involved in bringing about that change. And that's what's so exciting. Yeah, I mean, you know, no, nobody's nobody's trying to, um, how should I say, rep, you know, we shouldn't be about, and nobody's trying to represent this as something other than what it is. It is where it is, and that's part of the that's part of the great great thing about being involved in something so revolutionary. It's 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 rough and it's rough and not quite ready. Uh, nature, it, it's all part of the, all part of the package. But I think that we, not just we, but you know the the musicians who are coming out in support of of the the 99 percent revolution. People who want to be free get themselves free. Um, we all need to. We all need to. They all need to. When they come on, is do. I mean, the ceiling demons have done great. They 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 tweet and retweet stuff now, and we need to multiply that by you know a hundred bands, a uh, hundred musicians, a hundred uh, independent filmmakers, artists, directors, you know whoever who are the creatives, photographers. My goodness, how many photographers? Are there in the world? Um, As I said, I, 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 that this will happen. I mean, they're, they're, they're cut, I mean, as we stand today, they're already here. I've got them waiting, queuing up behind me. You know, that I, this is where it's going to. I said this from, from day one. We've on the Safe Cafe. This is going to catch fire, and I think if we're not as us here as the early adopters, if we're not aware of how much. And how fast this is going to take catch fire? We're going to be caught. We're going to be caught. Stood there looking, whistling in the wind, because the bands are coming, the musicians are coming, the artists are coming. They're already here, and I've said this before. They're like an army. That all they're waiting for is just give me something, give me some food, give me something I can march on and change the world. Because I'm, t I, I'm telling you, from where I'm, the angle I'm at, and the, and the man, the pent up, the pent up frustration. It's huge, huge. I mean, I know you don't see it in the media, but that's the point because you don't see it in the media. The 99% is massive, and they're so pent up for change. And it's not just the musicians and the artists and the filmmakers. It's the 
bakers and the electricians and the joiners, the people out there have had enough. Don't all worry. they want is a viable alternative. And all we're trying to do with 99% in the 99% network is open the gates. That's all we have to do is open the gates and they will come flooding through because people have had enough. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I agree with that and, and I believe in what you're saying. I think the evidence the evidence that that is, uh, I mean, we need to be able to, how should I say, we need to be able to, um, well, I'll be looking forward to talking more to you and because, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I really feel like um, you, we do need to, we do need to reach out and, and inform people. And we do need to reach out and educate people. And you know, marketing isn't a bad word to me. I think that we need to market what we're what we're trying to accomplish. And then if you know, I mean, right now, you know, we've got a handful of viewers. And okay, over time, when it go when it goes to YouTube, we're seeing we're seeing that you know people are 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 uh, tweeting it, tweeting the YouTube link, and people then watch watch it for for a little while, um, and that's okay. But you know we need um, how should I say uh, you know you know m sort of momentum, if you will, and and I think that some of that momentum will attract the right developers um, whereas without it I'm not I'm not saying we can't I mean I, again I really believe that no matter how this sort of happens it's gonna it's gonna ha it's gonna happen it's gonna be successful because well, the need is there it, it just exists it, it, you, we're not we're not we're not trying to create some kind of artificial need. It's it's a real fundamental thing. Uh, how how well we're able to meet the need and meet the desire. Well, that's a whole different story. And I agree that you know we we need to think about that a lot. Yeah, because we can't raise expectation and not deliver. We can't do that. Not on something. As painful as this. Well, um, I agree with that, and um, but at the same time, it is what it is, you know. And people, people, oh, you know, uh, you have to. I think you have to. Um, tell people about a certain future that's coming and work on creating that future at the same time and yeah. and it does it does raise people's expectations i understand that and there always i suppose the risk i not suppose i know there's a i mean i know there's a risk you know you you, you don't know 100% if you can deliver but you know i think I, I think it's only a matter of time if we, you know, have what I call grit. You know, it's a, it's not a very fancy word, but it's the word that's that I know how to use, which says you just keep at it, you don't quit, and eventually it works. I, th I, th I think it was like like you, like you were saying in the green room. It's only about people hearing it. That that and that's that's all it is. And look at and and I know like anything. It's just, it's like the once more people hear about it, this thing will just grow and grow and grow. But then we've got to be aware that when that happens, that these people I know, some of the people I've been speaking to, and I don't know whether we have the same common thing that everyone else has in this conversation has, but mm -hmm. I'll do that. I'll do that. You can is, is the fact of um, 
they don't want a lot of things. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. It's, it's, I, everyone I speak to, they don't want some sort of holographic, part holographic, um, you know, a, a platform. They just want something very simple. And and I think it's it's just about. I don't know. I think the old uh, the old adage of just keep it simple, stupid. I think we need to apply that very very. You know, like, like you were saying, just making it simple, easy for people to understand. Because we we all get this, but it's like I'm, we're a bit behind over this part of the world. But it's just like these are all brand new concepts to people. You know, Bitcoin's a brand new concept. Made safe's a brand new concept. Safe networks a brand new concept. Ninety nine. These are all new concepts. And as 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 we've seen with Bitcoin, that started to gain gain tra traction, but that took eight years. But this one, I think, will go faster and faster and faster because already the, the groundwork, the Bitcoin, is already laid. Especially in America. I mean, I'm I'm finding a lot of people coming to me are from America who get this far more than the English or this part of the world because they've been in, you know, like like Rich was saying, they already know about Bitcoin. I mean, I mean Rich will be able to tell them more. more. I mean, I'm sure that the, the, the appetite in his part of the world is far stronger than it is here because we've got literally a superpower breaking down as we watch. <laughs> well, maybe you have a point. I, um, I don't know. What do you think about that, Rich? Well, uh, the understanding of it is uh, relatively small. I think everywhere, uh, you know, I introduce it to people who hear about it on the news. And I, I had a Bitcoin meetup uh, several months ago here in a small town, and it had about a dozen people show up. One of the uh, uh, government people showed up and took interest in. He's also a business owner, and uh, you know, but he's not. There's still a a misconception always going around because most of the people still get their understanding of Bitcoin through uh, the mainstream news outlets, which seem to be predicting the death of Bitcoin every other episode they talk about it. So, um, you know, even that's still true. Uh, I think. You know, there are certain things that are about to happen in the U.S., and including the Winklevoss uh, brothers getting their ETF through uh, the SEC, SEC approval of the Security and Exchange Commission. Once, if that goes through, um, I think there's going to be a huge rise of people trying to wrap their heads around it because a lot of the traditional investors will jump in. That's not a, necessarily a good thing, but that will definitely raise awareness uh, to a, another level here in the U.S., of what it is, uh, people will, uh, will educate themselves that much uh, better on the whole subject of decentralized decentralized currencies. Um, but uh, that being said, uh, there, I think right now what we're talking about is the ability to spread the message without uh, giving false expectations. Uh, and so I see what we're doing right now as a brain cloud, a brainstorming. Uh, we're thinking about all the things that it can be, while at the same time saying, uh, here's the minimum product that could be available soon with minimal uh, skills on on the on the side of the developer. You know, create something simple that just allows artists to upload their work. Uh, but as is said already, uh, the APIs aren't uh, polished yet. You know, we're we're gonna they want to know that the Safecoin wallets uh, are are bulletproof. You know, there's a lot of things to be done still uh, on that side. So I see what we are doing right now as an important uh, brainstorming event where we can keep let, being the Imagineers, as you put it, David, uh, just having fun with the concepts and the uh, ideas that can be uh, had and, and realized with a minimal effort. So. Um, you know what we're doing here, I think, is really important because we're getting, we're sharing ideas, uh, and without putting the proverbial cart before the horse, let you know we, we can say, okay, here's what it's capable of, but let's really uh, focus on the uh, imagineering side of it, and and then really start defining in the white paper. Here's how we this minimal product can be put together and plain English, as Darren put it, and somebody like Darren will come across and say, sure, I'll spend a weekend on that and have something put together in a weekend once the API is available uh, on the main safe side. So as long as there's a series of, of uh, white papers on different aspects of how Network 99 will play with MadeSafe, will play with SafeCoin, uh, 
then once that is finally undeveloped, uh, you know, uh, brought to the world, then the developers will jump in and say, okay, now we have something to work with, let's go to town. And we, who were the Imagineers, uh, will have the skeleton already there for them to go ahead and, you know, make it happen. So let's just keep imagining. I, 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 I agree with you, Rich. I mean, to me, it's, it, I, I've used the analogy before, it's like standing 150 years ago and saying, I don't, I oppose slavery. I don't know what's going to come after it, but I'm doing it because it's right. And I've, you've just hit on a very good point. What we're doing is visionary. We Maybe maybe I'm being too self-critical, but in some ways it's not important. All we have, I think, like Richard was saying, as long as we're standing up and we're having the vision, then the rest is basic will follow. You know, when, when people stood up to slavery, they didn't do it with a... The, the plan already in place of how what was going to happen. They just st stood up and said, no, this is wrong, and this is where we are now. I mean, I think one of the great things is what we're doing now is we're separating the, the state and money. That's a revolutionary step to have. You know, we're, we're, we're taking money away from, from the state, which is what you, know, you put up in, 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 in this intro for the podcast. That's going to kill the police state. It's going to kill the armies. It's going to kill everything because they only do what they do under the pretension of nicking all our money. And once we take their money that away from them, it's, it is, it's, a big, it's the next great step in, in, in mankind's evolution. We've had the separation of the church and the state, which is God bless America for doing. We, <laughs> and, and, and now we're getting to the point where we're separating the state from money. And that, that is such a, a revolutionary thought, like that Richard was saying, it is visionary, but hey, we just got to stand here as being the visionaries. What will happen? I don't know, like to say to someone, if you talk to David Livingston, you know, 150 years ago, 200 years ago, and say to him, oh, but you oppose slavery, what's going to happen next? He wouldn't have been able to tell you. He wouldn't have imagined the world we live in now. As I was saying to the boys last, night, last week in The Demons, Neil Young in the 70s had no concept of what rap music would become. You know, the future is unwritten. All we've got to do, like, like, that, like, like um, Rich was saying, is be visionary. But I think it's all right being visionary, but we have... We have to keep saying it's strong and strong and strong. We can't just sort of say, oh, we put a vision up there, that's it, we're going to retreat into our holes and not doing anything. I think it's crucial that we stand up over and over again, even if we're unsure about what our vision is. Because, as, <laughs> as Richard said, I think the most important bit, as David said, we both say, we're all saying, is just have the vision. The vision of things is the, is the key. And David, do. it's very, very true what he was saying. And we can go beyond uh, having the vision if if we feel so strongly that this is going to happen. We can get the our artists in line, and we can get footage in line and ready to go. And it reminds me of when I was a kid before I was able to purchase a CD player. I, I was uh, collecting CDs before I had a CD player. I don't know anybody else that did that, but I I was it had a strong collection. And yeah, you did it too. <laughs> <laughs> I had enough money to get this CD player. I had you know dozens of CDs ready to play. So you kind of look at it like that. You know, here are the artists. You know, they're on. They're waiting. They're ready. They understand that you know it takes time to uh, for these developers to do what they need to do. And I think uh, that momentum of having where we can say, and this could be a good part of the website. Start get breaking, getting a list on that website of all of the artists that are ready to jump on board. And in that website, wow, when that's a developer like this. The developer will say, hmm, "I already have a built, you know, captive audience for my work, and that's another strong and, uh, way to get it done." Yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's, that's a great thought. Yeah, that's. I mean, the the idea that we have to collect bands is similar to what you're talking about with the CDs, and then put, you know. Present that information to to developers and say, hey, "Look, we've got demand." That that, and yeah, vision is the beginning. But it's, you're right too. That you don't just stop there. You know, we have to we have to keep pushing out and looking and seeing. Even though we're not sure what we're doing, we have to keep looking and seeing what's the next thing to do. Well, I'm going to finish that white paper. That's that's for sure. I'm going to, or we are. You yeah. know, you guys can all edit as well on that. Shared document on Google Drive that we're gonna we're gonna put out we're gonna put out that white paper, and we you know we're gonna create um, that application 
when 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 not if when we find the right developers the ones that are going to be on we'll get the word out um, we'll talk to um, we'll talk to that list Tim because you'll go down and drink beers with Irvine or something <laughs> tell them to Let me, turn, I, turn you on to the list of, of who those guys are and we can I, talk to them. I know I mean, the great thing about what we're doing in Network 99 is just, it's going to be full of all, initially, this is one of the great things about it, full of all the cool bands, the, the, the cool filmmakers, the people that no, no, nobody knows about but are making great stuff, they're going to be on us, on our network, and that is going to be a massive attraction because there's such a pent up demand for, these, for creative stuff that's not being put into the mainstream because the one percent and the people who control the media go, oh no, no, you must you know, put as I said before. Yeah, they they, they want what they want. I mean yeah. I have well to, wait, I mean say, Ryan Martin said it very well. He said in that in that email I showed you, he was saying, you know, in the world we live in right now, all that's important is the first five seconds. Now that's not what someone who who who, who generates a, 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 a product you know, creative wise, they don't want it in all the five seconds, and that's going to be the very appealing part of our network because there's so many, as we saw with Demons last week, there's so many people that have got creative stuff that they were looking for the opportunity to put on. And can you imagine going to the network and another the website and seeing a list of really good filmmakers and like, oh wow, and look at that band there, and look at that, you know? That's what, you know, as, as Rich was saying. The reason I started collecting CDs is because all the bands that I like were, 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 doing, were moving in that direction. And that's what's going to pull a lot of people across. Like we should say, I mean, the idea of the website is a fantastic idea. I love that. Because that's going to really pull other musicians, other bands in, and stuff like this. And we're going to have a cool network. Let's not forget that. We're going to have the coolest network in the world. We're going to have the coolest network in the world. And that's what we got to believe in. And that's a fact because of what you just said. You know, listen. I'm old enough to remember, and I don't, I'm just curious if you guys can remember, because I don't know if you guys are old enough to if even... I know, Tim, because you're in, kind of in the music business, you might have known about this, but there was a day when I was listening to something called a Album-Oriented FM Stations, I where know. I'm telling you, you could go on and <laughs> listen to 40 minutes, and I'm talking about popular radio stations. I'm talking like top five stations in a, in, a net, in, a, in, a, in a geographical area. You know, there was a station in Philadelphia called WMMR and 93.3 uh, uh, on the dial. To this day, I remember that. And we used, to, and it's still probably in existence, you know, as a radio station, but the point I'm trying to make is you could listen to 40 minutes of, 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 of Led Zeppelin, you know, and whatever came out, they would, they would just, and and so the idea today, and it was so heartbreaking. Listen, read that email you sent me from that guy um, wh about how he, you know, if he didn't put in the the the, the first five seconds, the, the catchy thing that was going to attract the lowest common denominator sound to sell the most Coca-Cola in in five seconds on a on a radio station, well. That guy wouldn't have been interested in signing that signing that guy on, you know. We don't have to worry about that. The artists don't have to worry about that anymore, with 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 what we're trying to accomplish. And it's only a matter of will. By the way, I want to say that, Don. I have I have I am certain of what I'm telling you, is that, you know, it's not a matter of if the network is going to be. Um, finished the technology is going to you know is going to be done and uh, the only question it's not the question whether this is going to exist or not the question is going to be the question comes down to whether or not we are going to bring it into existence or not because it is going to come into existence because I, agree. I, I don't I don't I don't believe that there is an original idea under the sun and if I can, if I can think, if I can think these thoughts, you know, there's plenty. There's got to be others thinking these thoughts. I think the the key to do is is 
is everything we've talked about tonight. Rich, keep you know honing on that, honing on the the website. Keep put list list bands as we get them. Uh, bring bands on the show, Tim. Um, everybody doing the same thing as far as putting out information, tweeting and retweeting uh, the show and whatever else we're doing to help people gain an understanding of what the safe network is, what SafeCoin is, who made safe are, who we are, why why Network 99 is going to be like the coolest app in the world because it is going to be the coolest app in the world. I believe that. I'm not making that up. I think it's going to be cooler than cool. And yeah, keeping it simple. Keeping it simple. Just the just the basics right now is what we want to do. And um, um, go down there. Go down there and and uh, take David out to a pub and get that list of developers out of them. <laughs> well, I, I think it's just going back to what you, you know, the, the title of this of this safe cafe. I think. What, all the applications we've mentioned so far, from whistleblowing right through to the almost kind of light side of things, this music and stuff. The reason this is so crucial is because we can sit here and we can, we can laugh about it, but people right now are dying on this planet because of the system that's in place. And that's why it's all right for us to sit there. But this is the reason, I, the reason I'm, I'm sat here and I do what I do is because I want to basically leave this world at some point thinking, I've pushed the world where these people who are kidding people are downplayed. Because, you know, I know people who are, you know, in countries, I know some people in Venezuela who, you know, this is the reality. They're, they're having people shot on a daily basis. And the only reason this happens is because they steal money, they steal power, they steal everything under the centralised system. So that's why I'm doing it. But to me, everything else beyond this is, well, they're, they're, they're minor hitches. I don't stand for what I stand for in this safe cafe and worry about technicalities because I know I'm right. <laughs> and it's going to yeah. happen. It is going to happen. And so I want to just say, I just want to say here and now is that, um, n you know, we're not about raising expectations and then not delivering. Um, I think we're going to do everything we can to deliver to realize this. Um, I think if we were, you know, if we if we were more capable than we are, we'd already be, you know, writing <laughs> writing the code ourselves. But that isn't that isn't going to happen without without talented coders. So that needs to be on the forefront of our, of our strategy. I totally endorse that idea. Um, but the idea has such superior merit in and of itself. And 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 so we don't have to, you know, try to convince anybody. We just show them what it is, why it why it is a, a better idea. That's easy to do. And have people make choices of their own own free will. You know, we're all freedom lovers here. You know, nobody's trying. You know, these guys that are into pushing people to do stuff that, you know, to manipulate them. That's the old world of the, you yeah. know, put ads in front of people's eyeballs and manipulate them into doing something. That that stuff, in my opinion, is about raising expectations artificially to get people to buy stuff. And you know that isn't what this is. Uh, um, no, I think I'm, I'm sorry, David. I'm no, don't, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. I think I, I'm just very mindful of the fact that there is a tidal wave waiting for this, and as soon as we tell them, people are sold on the idea. As soon as they get it, they're sold on it, and. Like you say, it's just a matter of timing. It's just about holding back the breakwaters until things are ready. But I'm sure the things yeah, okay. need to be ready. I think, I think the thing is this: is that there's no time to waste doing the things that can be done. 
Yeah. So let's do those things that can be done. You know, let's not sit around and 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 you know wait for some 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 magic pill because that ain't coming. You know, we're only going to get a lucky break if if you want to call it that. We're only going to get the right people to show up if we've done what we can do. I'm going to I'm going to get that white paper done. I know Rich is going to do what he has to do for the website. I know Tim and you are going to do what you have to do to get the bands and 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 the artists and I, you know um, cuz you run in those circles and and while we're on it, Don, um, you know you're the I know you're somebody with project management skills, so um, Put your put put some English into that, as we say in America. <laughs> it's like <laughs> no, it's like a style of of billiard when you when you hit when you hit the ball with some English on it. You know, it's a it's a, it's a fancy it's a fancy okay. shot. Okay, you invited me. You won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want you. I know. I know you've got. I know you've got real skills. I mean, Tim, let that out of the bag. So, um, yeah. You know. I apologize. I, I again, I've not. I've not put as much time and effort in over the last few weeks as as I wanted to. Um, but please bear with me. I'm five weeks into a new job at the moment, so I've been in information overload in all directions. So. Um, I, I don't feel. I, I mean, I feel bad for you because I mean, I sympathize. What I'm trying to say is, I'm I'm teaching a new course at the university, so. Okay, so you you're in the same space. I. Yeah. That's all settling down now, so I can start and put more more brain power into this. Um, yeah, yeah, and and that's all I'm saying is that if we. You know, I don't have. I want to say this. I want to say this. I don't have any fear of failure about this project. It doesn't exist for me because it's it's a naturalistic answer to everything. I think I look at it as I I know I know if I don't do anything and just sit around, nothing's going to happen. I understand that part, but I'm so in. What's the word? I'm so passionate about what I'm doing, and I pick that up in all of you. So, um, you know, it's not like it, 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 it. This is our, this is our chance to, to how should I say, show that, you know, leaderless collaboration works. You know, people, we just put our heart and soul into what we're doing and um, you know I mean I know it's going to work because that's where my heart is and and I know that people who are that way are going to come along one way or the other and, <laughs> and and so and so and so and so like because the need that's what I'm trying to say because the need is so great I don't worry about I don't have to have all the talent in me but I do have to make it my business to put around me, and you have to make it your business to put around you, all of you, uh, the the pieces of the puzzle, if you will, because that's that's what's going to get it done. Is when we have everybody together who have the diversity of talent that needs that we need, um, we'll we'll have it. We'll get it. To, it'll get done because the naturalistic need and desire. For what we're up to, exists. Period. The pent up demand is there. We just need to bring it out. David, you, you hit on a key word there: diversity. Mm -hmm. now, in, in nature, everything is diverse. And, right. And, and I think what I found interesting in the sort of communications I've had in the last sort of ten days, people almost maybe because they've been conditioned into it, they sort of feel that. Which I love to repeat that none of this is a, my idea, it's not Dawn's idea, it's not David's, it's not Rich. None of us are ownership this. We're not part of a company. This is what we're doing for in our own spare time. You know, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to say is people have been conditioned into almost like, oh, I can contribute to this. Now I we we've been saying since day one, please, 
all contributions are, 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 are valuable because this is an open network and it's a right. decentralized network, which means anybody can come in with an idea. I mean, I, right. I, I, I'm passionate about things. I know all four of us are here, but none of us are going to be pushing my will. I'm not going to push my will over anybody else because that's not what we're about. And I think if it's quite a, a difficult concept for most people in the world to understand because they've almost been taught to, oh, I don't say anything. I keep my head below the parapet and I don't don't come up with suggestions because somebody at the top has all the ideas. What, we're, what the revolutionary thing about what we're saying is is that it's the 99% come up with the ideas, not the 1%. And that's, like you said, the diversity of ideas is, is, is a crucial thing because what we're finding, as we're finding in this, is that, well, we've got people from all four parts of the world, but we're all, all like-minded, but we've all come from different diverse ideas, and that's going to be the strength of what we're going to add. Because it's not just you know one person with my idea. I'm going to push what I want through. Do you know what I mean? We've got all four of us from from Rich over in, in, in America to you in Israel to Scots to everybody. And diversity is is, is the great strength of what we're we're, we're at. We're, we're we're going to give to the network and what the network's about. And yeah, that, I think that. I think Network 99 in itself is pioneering the whole new world of the safe network, even though it's not operational yet, which is the idea of what an, op what an open value network is. Because I, I contend that on only something like this, I don't care what you call it, I call it an open value network because I learned about that terminology from... Uh, a company called Sensorica that builds uh, certain kinds of sensors and they operate this way where anybody can come in look at uh, something called a um, like a work schedule that has its own value accounting system and if you do the work you get paid it, it, you know it's as simple as that and uh, and it's a flat world you know and I think that in a in the new world, in the naturalistic world, in a world of autonomous network technology, a world we call the ant world, <laughs> the acronym for that, um, it it isn't it it is it isn't a hierarchy. What it is is though. I want to say this. In this world, leadership is not dead. It's just that it doesn't reside in one place. It's there are times where you lead you lead because you're the guy or the gal with the vision. And when people stand around and listen to you talk and you enroll them in that idea and it's the best idea because the idea is king, not people are kings anymore. Everybody goes, okay, yeah, let's follow Dawn. She's got the right idea. Let's go. You know, next go round, it might be Rich. Rich has the idea. And then everybody follows Rich. And that, you know, you know, the idea of leadership still exists. It's just, it's just that it travels around a lot. And um, you have, you, you know, I think that the safe network itself, and I think, the open value network called Suite 99 and Network 99 and soon to be Studio 99. These applications uh, will be created by people in that way because people might be in different places in the world and you know it's uh, that's okay because um, that's diversity too. If you want diversity, it isn't going to be you and everybody on the same block because you and everybody on the same block might not see things. I mean, you know, or you might see things too much the same is really the problem sometimes. Yeah, I mean, David, there's, a, there's a, an old adage in psychology from an old experiment they did in the 70s, and they found basically the headline of it is that incompetent people overestimate their abilities. Which basically leads to centralization. Because you've got people who, who are overconfident in the lack of what they've got, take leadership and then they centralize everything. And we 
And these type of people, they fail to recognize talent in others and they reject logic. Now, everything I've just said isn't what we're saying for. We stand completely opposite. I'm not, I love talent in others. I love the talent that mm -hmm. show me some of the bands. But I love talent. I love talent whenever I see it. Right. We're, this is this is the revolutionary point where, where we are. We're, that, that, that model I just said about people overestimating their abilities and that leads to centralization and they don't want to recognize talents and that reject logic. We're completely the other way against that, which is what nature is about. Nature doesn't bother about talent. It doesn't, it doesn't fuss about what, what plant grows high enough. It just all it's bothered about is what happens. Mm -hmm. Where we are right now, because we live in a world that's been created by people who have overinflated their, their abilities and right. brought this world to where it is right now. And we're, we're standing here and saying, and I would call, give to the people I know who are listening, saying, look, talent is talent. And we're giving you the opportunity to basically come up in this world and show your talent and instead of rejecting logic, embrace logic and, and realize that, wait a minute, you were born on this planet, nobody gave you any rules, nobody gave you any rights, nobody gave you anything. You have got to make your own stand in this world because we're all going to die at some point. And you have to, you know, and it, that's what, it, it's crucial, we all stand up. And this is what a lot of artists are going to love, and I know they can come to me for it because Man, people like me, that's what we've done. We, we want to stand up and express ourselves. And we, we understand that. And that, it's the key to what we're doing. And I think, I, I'm sure Richard agree, I'm sure Dom agree, I'm sure you would all agree. We, we, we embrace talent. That's what the, I think is going to be the strength of what we're doing. Is that we're not going to reject talent because it doesn't sell adverts. We're going to embrace talent because we don't, we don't need adverts. Uh, you know, the only thing, only thing I, I mean... That's why I've sort of been resistant to the idea of planning the safe cafe too much. I mean, if I've always envisioned that this should be a place where, you know, there was there, there wasn't even though I hosted it because you know somebody's got to do that. Um, it it wasn't going to be my agenda. I mean, we'd never have this conversation like this if I planned it. This wouldn't have been the conversation. And and so I think that this has to be like this. I think you have to deal with the ambiguity of the moment and be willing to deal, you know, just sort of embrace the uncertainty of that for the opportunity that it is. It's a real opportunity here and now to have an authentic conversation about creating that future. You know, if we plan it out too much, you know, this is the Safe Cafe show and, you know, um, now we're going to talk about this. And, you know, I, I'm not against, you know, if people have ideas and they want to talk about it. But at the same time, you know, I think it's, it is important for people to be able to feel free that, I, like, you don't need my permission to say what you just said. That That is how an open value network works. You just step into it and you say what you have to say or contribute what you have to contribute in the way of work, whatever that is, you're not asking anyone's permission and you're not waiting to be told. It's that you bring that, you bring that into that. And again, I'm not against if we, in the future, if we all agree by consensus that, you know, or the ones, you know, the one, you know, the ones who participate the most, I suppose, agree by consensus that we need to put a little bit more structure in it to make it a little bit more, give it more pizzazz or you know any of that stuff, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm all for that. That will come over time. I mean, we watch a few podcasts, and you go back to some of the early ones. And everybody's been through what we're going through now, even the ones who've, who've got huge followings and, and are really established out there. You've got mm -hmm. to find the feet. And it's, I think you're right, I think the open structure of what we're doing reflects everything that we're about. And if yeah. someone wants to come in and talk about, you know, other ways in which Network 99 can be used. I mean, you bring up the whistleblower one. That is mm -hmm. so crucial. But as a community of Network 99, what are we going to do to support those people who do whistleblow? 
what are we going to do so that they're not just whistling in the wind? Because we've had a huge case in my county, in my part of England, just this week, that is horrific, absolutely horrific. And it, 1,400 girls have been abused over years. And they've been abused by the state system. They've gone to teachers who've ignored them. They've gone to police who've threatened to arrest their parents. They've gone to every level of society. This has hit in the press. Nobody's lost their jobs. And all the press are doing is making excuses. And I, for one, as a mother, am sick of hearing excuses for this kind of behavior. It's been going on majority of my life, and I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to hear it anymore. But when those children come forward, they need to know they've got support. They need to know that we'll be there. The whistleblowers need to know that the community will be there to back them, because otherwise they're just whistling in the wind. Yeah, well, a whistleblower's network or channel um, has the, you know, I mean, somebody comes on. If the guy, if a whistle, if a whistleblower channel, whoever that person is who develops that idea, um, begins to get um, some traction, so that uh, people are paying attention, um, then it's going to be less possible for people to ignore whistleblowers because that means as soon as somebody comes on 100,000 people or a million people know about it worldwide you know it's it's not going to be easy to ignore stuff like that or eat let's put it that way it won't be easier also also in those circumstances I think one of the things that's afforded by the safe network is anonymity so there will be ways for people creatively to come forward about certain situations without divulging their um, identity. Yeah. And I think that that's a great a great innovation um, that's going to be possible with what we're trying to do. Um, and I'm like you, you know, I, I mean, I'm all excited about, you know, how how cool it's going to be, you know. <laughs> But there's more going on here than just how cool it's going to be. Uh, it is a revolution, and I I am an uh, unapologetic revolutionary. Uh, as a 99% rebel, um, I want to do what I can do to bring about the end of the world as we know it. And and um, and so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, a safe cafe is a place for people to foment and throw gasoline on that revolution. You know, I, I, I decided a long time ago, not a long time ago, but, well, yeah, I mean, for me, it's, yeah, I've been through enough that uh, I lost my fear of what people are going to do to me uh, a while ago. That's why I don't choose to do what I do except by my name. My name is David Lassoff and I'm a 99% rebel and I'm a, I am not a statist. I am against the state and I'm going to do everything in my power to just to destroy the power of the state. And <laughs> and, 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 you're gonna, and 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 you you brutes you brutes and thugs out here who might stumble onto a safe cafe, you're going to have to put a bullet in my head to get me to shut up. It's no, yeah. Nothing short of that is going to get me to shut up. Because the only thing fear is fear itself. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to die because um, um, there are things worse than death, in my opinion, and one of those things is to live the life of, live your life as a coward who is in a, who's afraid of brute uh, brutish things like child abuse, you know. I, you know, I want, I, you know, you know, you know, you know. People can, people can, can get people. The brutes and thugs of the world should be getting very scared right now, because I'll tell you, when the safe network's going to be able to do, you brutes and thugs out there, listen to me carefully. We're going to be able to conspire together to put up bounties 
to go hire hitmen to go kill you, kill you, Bruce and thugs. Dish back to you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> no, but David, David, no, what I'm trying to say, David, is, is what we're standing for is more revolutionary than that because. I know it is. I just. I these just, people, what I'm trying to say, are, these people can only do what they do because they've got control of money. The I know that. I know that. Is it, what they won't have the power to, to brutalize because they can. No, only they do won't. That now because they of won't. the system that's been set up, where they can go in. And because they control, they can steal your money to use for their evil needs. When you take That's right. Money, it is the true revolution. We have to go. Right. And, we have to go and find them. They won't have any power. Right. Now, I shouldn't even kid around about that because to be a 99% rebel is to be someone who has no interest in violence, no interest in in those kinds of things. Uh, I think you're exactly correct, Tim. Um, the the idea that we can uh, just basically starve the dinosaur that, that it is and opt out of those that, that situation and uh, opt into a uh, alternative uh, safe coin economy is revolutionary and uh, you know I don't know how long it's going to take but it won't it won't take that long once things start moving in that direction so David, not only is it revolutionary I mean, I, 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 say, I, I say not only is it revolutionary, but I, I sit on the side of the world. I mean, you're in Israel. David, I mean, what, what, what Rich is going through in America at the moment with the Ferguson stuff. The, what I'm trying to say is it's, it's so crucial that what we're doing. And this is why we must, you know, we stand up where we stand, because human lives are being lost. And this is, yeah. I mean, it's all right for us to sit around and talk about it, but ultimately we're doing it because human lives are being lost. And... Or everything we can do to stop that, because man, I sit and watch what's going on in the states at the moment, thinking, man, if we're not careful, we're going to be back down to what it was in Europe under under Hitler. We, we, you know, if we do, if we don't stand up for these people, they're just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger, because they will corrupt Bitcoin. Trust me, they're going to come in and, and corrupt Bitcoin. They love it. It's like the new Cadillac for them. Yeah, I think that I think that the the uh, statists have already co-opted Bitcoin. So I think that that it's 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 already baked in that that's going to be their new shiny instrument of control, and yes, in the United States it's becoming a police state. Um, in Israel, it's, you know, it's chaos all all around us. Um, you're at the sharp end. What's that? I said you're at the sharp end. Yeah, and 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 you know, but. Um, we should have great hope because the 99% revolution is a peaceful, unstoppable, and very effective revolution because people don't have to confront power in the 99% revolution. You just opt out of totalitarian and authoritarian systems and opt in to a private, secure, and free, alternative, safe coin economy. Which where Safecoin is not Bitcoin. Safecoin is digital crypto cash, as I call it. Digital crypto cash that and it, it's untraceable. There it doesn't act, it, There's no public ledger. You just you know I have something to sell. I sell it to you. You give me Safecoin, and you know it won't take long to to have a strong Safecoin economy. It, it isn't gonna. It's not gonna take. You know, 50 years. I think, you know, I don't know how long it's going to take, but you know, it's reasonable to assume that. I don't know when. When? When was Facebook nothing? You know, how long? What? What year did, was Facebook have zero, Not zero long. people? Yeah. Well, what? This, David, I, I joined Twitter as an early adopter, and I wasn't that early in 2009. That's what five, six years ago, and look yeah. how that's become. <laughs> yeah. so, well, like, you, know, you, know. you know, it's it doesn't it doesn't take long to put together millions of people anymore, does it? No, 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 no. no, no. And I think because the path has been trodden before us, that's why it's going to be easier for us this time because people don't have to learn about the concept of the internet. Don't have to learn, you know. It's not going to take a while for people to come up with applications because 
we've got templates. Okay, we'll do them differently, but but there's examples out there that what, you know what we're doing is taking that to the next level rather than starting from scratch. In 1997, internet penetration in the UK was only five percent. And in Argentina, it was 0.5%. Argentina are caught us up, and we're running at not not 99%, but probably around. I think it's 92% in the UK now. And 92% in the UK. Yeah. Wow. And that that's what we're saying is the audience is out there. So that's like. You know, that's like 97, 07, that's like 17 years. Yeah, so, you know, it's like, okay, you know, to me it's like, I think, I think that 10 years, the impact of what this is, is going to be huge. That's how I look at it. Yeah, because we're going to get there so much quicker this time, because right. people are Get get the base concept, and mm -hmm. what we have to do is is take that to the next level, and people want it. That's the key. That they're dissatisfied with what they've got today, and want an alternative, just like we do. Well, my we're, we got about four minutes left. I mm -hmm. wanted to just you know we're talking about next things, and I didn't want to leave the conversation without leaving out the up and coming generation of what i would call the like the 15 to 25 year olds um, the reason why i wanted to bring them up is that i don't know that they have the same concerns about privacy i'm kind of concerned about that generation i kind of see a little bit of absence of concern about it that they don't quite get that they should have it I don't know, is that, is that just me, or has anyone no, else picked up no, on that? In our country, it's worse. It's not just the under 25, it's everybody. I think we've been bred in the last 10 years to not accept privacy anymore. It's almost like it's become an alien concept to the human race, especially in the Western world. So I don't think it's the under 25. I mean, they, they, I think they're more because they've had their whole lifetimes. I mean, I know, I speak to that in that age, and they haven't got any concept of privacy. In fact, it's the way around. You put all your life onto Twitter, all your life onto Facebook, all your life on the Tumblr, etc., etc., and you show the world. It's, I think it's like I think it's very. I don't know. It's a scary thought, really, but people haven't got any concept of privacy anymore. I mean, it's, certainly we could talk about more on another show, but you're right. Yeah. I, th I think I think we should we should talk about it on another show because it's a, it's such an important idea. Uh, Rich, do you do you agree with this or disagree, or what's your thoughts on that? That's exactly right. A lot of people are willing to give up uh, a lot of freedoms, uh, the, the freedom of privacy, the, the freedom of getting on an airplane without being frisked. Uh, you know, it's, it's really nuts here in the States. Uh, you know, I know London is the most surveilled city, as I think Don pointed out last time. Uh, and but the U.S. is I mean right now I mean here we are talking openly and everybody that wants to see it can see it. Um, but even more than that, there's it's all of the uh, what Edward Snowden revelations showing that everything that we say on a cell phone that's turned off has the uh, capability of being recorded is is a uh, kind of mind-boggling. So. You know, it's one thing to approve uh, of being surveilled. It's another thing uh, to uh, take those rights back. And at least the safe network is going to attract uh, maybe not a huge percentage of people looking for privacy, but a good percentage. And and the others will come to the network because of the freedoms that it allows. Uh, you know, so I think. It'll be for everybody. It doesn't have to. People aren't going to ignore it just because it is the uh, place to go for privacy. Um, right. Um, well, I think, I think, I think you're right, and and uh, I just think that we have a we have a, a job to do to educate people about their natural rights. I think that people need to, you know, sort of deprogram, if you will, and realize that. 
they own themselves. I I do agree also with what you just said. I think for the most part, people will come and uh, be attracted to the safe network because it will be the obviously the fastest and most powerful uh, computer network that's ever been ever been ever uh, been conceived of. Mm -hmm. I was thinking earlier this week, um, this seems like a nightmare for statists, the safe network. But it is a nightmare. Time, <laughs> but at the same time, it, it is going to uh, allow a, a country that wants to have a hardened internet, uh, something that's secure from uh, a group that would destroy a central hub or a server facility. This is a way for... Uh, everyone to harden themselves against uh, not only natural disasters but man-made. And so mm. I think it's going to be allowed by governments if for no other reason than that, um, that it will be the way that uh, everyone, that the network in general uh, isn't susceptible to the frailties of centralization. So okay. going forward uh, for a lot of reasons, not just... Uh, you know, it, it of course it, it always takes the fringe to get something kickstarted. It where the fringe is always the spark that creates something. That's us, right? The fringe. We're yeah. the we're the we're the fringe, I guess. Yeah. Um, like okay. Well, um, I guess we've run out of time. I think it's good good for us to... David, can I, can I finish on a, a, a poem I wrote when I was about 21? And I dug it up the other day and I think it's very sort of like keys to what we're talking about. It's only a short one, so it's only going to take about 30 seconds. Hey man, it's okay. We can run over. We're allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> it was called um, Colour 16, right? Violence exists. We did not create it. States control. I did not vote for them. People are suppressed. We do not suppress them. Anger burns. We fuel the flame. Wow. Hey, you have to post. You have to post that on Google Plus, man. So, or, and and uh, yeah, yeah, just do. It. Oh yeah, definitely do it. Definitely, 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 definitely. Yeah, I mean, that's so great because uh, it's a great honor to me, a great privilege to me to be surrounded by. Freedom loving uh, co conspirators. Uh, so um, thanks for thanks for being being part of this revolution and thanks for being part of the Safe Cafe. Thanks for uh, being part of Network ninety nine and Sweet ninety nine and we'll we'll get it all done. Um, We'll, we'll do what we have to do, and um, people, we'll and people, say people keep it up because we've got some very interesting guests coming on. Some very, I mean, it will be planned for a few, two or three weeks time, but we've got some very interesting people coming on. So, this and, is, this and anyone, any names you want to drop, or don't feel good? Uh, about well, Ryan Martin from the film Bad Ideas. Um, oh yeah, he's definitely coming on, um, and I would recommend everyone go look at his clip because the film looks great. <laughs> so uh, we've got some. Anyway, I'll. But more. But what I'm trying to say is. Oh, that, and uh, and you and Kearney, uh, our our friend who we, we had on before the show, he had to go catch a train. He's a uh, he's a twenty something guy who's into business and marketing and social networking so he's going to give us some great ideas and helps along the way to promoting Network 99 and reaching out to whoever uh, we need to so I'm looking forward to talking to him too so um, thanks for being on um, hang out for a second I'm going to stop the broadcast I want to talk to you guys for a few minutes before we, before we say goodbye to each other but from the startup nation in Israel and uh, Rich, where in New Mexico are you? Uh, I'm down about 200 miles south of Albuquerque. Okay, so from the rural hinterlands of New <laughs> Mexico and from the Scotland that hopefully soon will be free, David Irvine, we're, we're rooting for you Scots, okay? Everyone there at Made Safe who's hoping for a Yes, on that referendum. 
maybe Scotland will be free. Uh, uh, Tim and Dawn, good to good to see all of you, and uh, thanks again, for everybody who viewed today, who were here today uh, on the Safe Network. We'll see you next Sunday, seven o'clock British Summer Time. Stay tuned, and we'll talk to you then. Bye-bye now.